Okay, so now we look at development of pollen grain and formation of male gamete. Okay, so before we proceed, okay, so first of all, we look again the structure of anther and also filament. Okay, so if you do the cross section of anther, so the structure will be like this. So inside of the anther, it consists of pollen sac or microsporangium. Okay, and then inside of the microsporangium here, it has microsporocyte. So actually, microsporocyte is a diploid cell, and then it is contained inside side of pollen sac okay so now we look at how pollen grain is developed and male gamete is formed okay so first of all okay so tadi saya dah mention okay inside of the pollen sac or microsporangium it has microsporocyte which is diploid cell okay so what happened to this microsporocyte each microsporocyte undergo meiosis and it will produce four haploid microspore okay so what happened to this four haploid microspore it will, uh, each of these microspore divide by mitosis and it will form pollen grain that consists of one tube cell and also one generative cell. So, pollen grain is the male gametophyte of the flowering plant. Okay, so this pollen grain uh, is still immature. Okay, maksudnya this pollen grain ni is, does not mature yet. Okay, so how this pollen grain will become matured male gametophyte okay once pollination is occur so this pollen grain will land on the stigma so once pollen grain land on the stigma so it will absorb the moisture on the surface of the stigma so what happened to the tube cell it will produce pollen tube okay which will deliver the male gamete to the egg okay and then what happened to the generative cell it will divide by mitosis to form two sperm or male gamete okay so kalau tengok based on this structure so saya explain balik okay so the microsporocyte inside of the microsporangium will undergo meiosis and form four haploid microspore and then each microspore will divide by mitosis and form pollen grain that consists of tube cell and also generative cell. So, this pollen grain is still immature pollen grain because pollination does not occur yet. Okay, and then remember pollen grain is the male gametophyte. Okay, so once pollination is occur, this pollen grain will land on stigma and absorb the moisture on the surface of the stigma. So what happened to the tube cell? It will produce pollen tube which deliver the male gamete or sperm to the egg and then what happened to the generative cell? It will divide by mitosis to form two sperm or two male gametes. Okay, next we look at development of ovule, embryocyte and formation of female gamete. Okay, so female gametophyte begins to develop within ovule. Okay, so kalau kita go through the structure, okay, so the outer side here, so this one kita panggil sebagai ovary and then inside of the ovary, it has ovule and inside of the ovule, it has embryocyte. So embryocyte is the female gametophyte for flowering plant okay and then here the structure here we call as integument and then the opening part here this one we call as micropi okay so the development of female gametophyte or embryocyte is occur in megasporangium in the ovule so where does the megasporangium so let's say this is the structure of ovule so inside of the ovule it has megasporangium and in this megasporangium it contain megasporocyte okay so each ovule contain a single mega sporangium. So now we look at the development of female gametophyte or embryo sac. Okay. So tadi kita dah discuss the development of female gametophyte or embryo sac. Okay. So now we look at the formation of female gamete. Okay. So kalau kita tengok tadi, so inside of the ovule it has mega sporangium and then this mega sporangium contain mega sporocyte which is diploid cell. So what happen to this mega sporocyte? It will divide by meiosis and it will produce four haploid mega spore. Okay, but what happen to this mega spore? Only one mega spore will survive. Why the other three mega spore will be degenerate? Maksudnya cuma ada satu sahaja mega spore yang akan survive. Okay, manakala tiga lagi mega spore will be degenerate. So what happen to this surviving mega spore? It will divide by mitosis three time without cyto 
kinesis. Okay, so kalau kita tengok, bila berlaku first time mitosis, okay, it will produce two uh, nuclei. Okay, and then the second mitosis, it will produce four nuclei. And then once the third mitosis is uh, pro, uh, is occur, so it will produce eight haploid nuclei. Okay, so from this eight haploid nuclei, Okay, near the micropi, micropi ni tadi adalah the opening structure here. So, near the micropi, there are two synergid and one egg cell. Okay, so this is two synergid. Okay, and then at the center here, dekat tengah-tengah synergid tu akan ada one egg cell. Okay, and then at the opposite end, this one. Okay, there are three antipodal cell. Okay, why the other two? Okay, it is the two polar nuclei that is located at the center of the embryo sac so this is the embryo sac so remember inside of the embryo sac once the uh, surviving megaspore divide by mitosis three times so it will produce eight haploid nuclei okay so the eight haploid nuclei will be three antipodal cell two synergid one egg and two polar nuclei Okay, so we already discussed about the formation of male gamete and also the formation of female gamete. So now, the next process is called the process of double fertilization in flowering plant. Okay, so if we go through the structure, okay, so let's say this is the structure of carpel that consists of stigma, sty and also ovary. Inside of the ovary, it has ovule and inside of the ovule, it has embryo sac. Okay, so tadi macam yang kita dah discuss, once pollen grain land on stigma, so what happen to the pollen grain, it will absorb the moisture on the surface of the stigma. So the pollen grain will, uh, uh, so the tube cell inside of the pollen grain will produce pollen tube. Okay, and then this pollen tube will develop. So what happened to the generative cell inside of the pollen grain? It is divided by mitosis and it will produce two sperm or two male gamete. So this pollen tube will deliver okay, the sperm to the, towards the uh, embryo sac. Okay, so... Kalau kita tengok dekat sini, okay, based on the explanation, so how to explain the process of double fertilization in flowering plant, okay. So first point, pollen grain consists of tube cell and generative cell land on stigma, okay. And then tube cell develop into pollen tube. So pollen tube elongates down the sty. So means that once pollen tube is already developed, so it will elongate down the sty. Elongate means dia akan memanjang down the sty okay and then generative cell divide by mitosis to form two sperm cell okay so now pollen grain is the mature gametophyte so pollen tube okay so let's say the pollen tube is already elongate down the sty okay and then near the micropi here so what happened the pollen tube penetrate embryo sac through my Cropi. So what happen to the tube cell? Tube cell will degenerate and then the two sperm cell here will enter the embryo sac. Okay, so this embryo sac will develop inside of the ovule that contain, okay, two polar nuclei, that contain two polar nuclei, one egg, two synergy, okay, and three antipodal cell. Okay, so once this pollen tube is already penetrate through the embryo sac, okay, so what happened to the two sperm cell? One male gamete or sperm will fuse with the egg forming diploid zygote. Okay, why the other sperm or male gamete will fuse to the two polar nuclei to form triploid and those sperm. Okay, so that's why this process we call as double fertilization. Why double fertilization? Because the fertilization is occurs two times. Kenapa two times? Because sperm consists of two. Maksudnya dia ada dua sperm, ada dua male gamete. So means that, okay, so let's say if the question asks you what is double fertilization? So means that one male gamete or sperm will fertilize or fuse with egg to form diploid zygote why the other male gamete fuse with two polar nuclei to form triploid endosperm